Can you visualize a nice paver walkway meandering between the driveway and the back patio? It's going to look good. Behind me too, off the living room, another smaller paver patio. We want to link the kitchen door, the back door, the woodshed over here with walkways and gathering and some smooth curves. We've got to redo the front and a paver patio with a kitchen in the back. We've got pavers, patios, palm trees, and lighting. We're going to have fun on this designer's landscape. I thought I would paint out the lines of the design that I've done. I did a hardscape plan for these friends. It included a backyard patio. But when the homeowner said, I want a walkway from my driveway uh, back around to the back of the yard, including a little pad or walkway to the back kitchen door, the back living room area, and behind you is the wood shop, well, let's bring them all together. So that's kind of the game plan. Uh, we'll see, we'll have an intersection here and uh, again, on the plan, I didn't get into details. I did spot where some palm trees will go, uh, where lighting will be, and our, our basic paver outline. And so we did a half plan for them, and I think it's going to be effective. Uh, so many people think or talk about a walkway. We're going to get to it on this one. I'm going to start right at the driveway. And I'll draw the right-hand side or outside of our patio. I'm just going to dot this in a little bit. I want to swing out, then I'm going to swing back here. A homeowner just told me this morning they need to go and have access to the trash cans over here. So we'll meander in and I kind of bend towards you to go to the woodshed. Now when I confirm where these lines should or should be, I'll make them solid. Uh, this concrete pad here, it is recessed, but a full paver on top might go too high. So we may have to pull that out, we'll see. Now I've got to make this work from here to the back kitchen door. So let's go like this and then that'll go that way. I, I don't want to get too squiggly, but I like the way that meanders. Now I may not have that three foot width everywhere, but this will go to the other patio and coming off of here, I'm gonna draw my back line, which will be something like this. Good, going all the way back to the driveway. I kinda of like the way this is feeling. I don't know what you can see. A little bit of an intersection here where these three different walkways meet. So, let me continue what's gonna be the inside coming off of this pad that'll take us I want a nice big radius and uh, this is going to be cool because coming off this corner is going to be a, a little paver patio and I'm going to swing this out all the way and bump it right here now I want to make sure that radius works for us I may, I may make that a little bit bigger. Okay, my walkway back from here is going to be joined like this. Now, what, what we do at this point with the patio here is it serves as the walkway, if you will. We're walking through the patio, and then the walkway continues from there to the very back. That comes actually later. He's got to get his posts in for what will be an outdoor, uh, an enclosure and we'll have a kitchen and everything there. I think I like these lines. I'm gonna draw them kind of solid so you can visualize it. We'll have to remove the grass. Let me ask you this. Do you think we should just keep uh, just turf grass here? No, especially at this intersection. Uh, we've gotta kind of consider some landscape. Let's see how that kind of peels through here where we can make some nice beds. And I know one thing, 
we've got turf outlined here, but this small little patch of grass is, it's got to come out because we need plants in there to soften some of the things you see in the backdrop. Where I find an intersection where two or more walkways enter and intersect, I found the need for a little bit of planting bed to give it some impact. And that's what we need to do here. Even though this would be, make a nice mowing easy curve on the inside, I want to see if we can uh, uh, bring some landscape across here and make, a, make an impact. So I like this radius. I'm going to pull off of it, if you will, and jump right over the walk here and then gradually bend it back into the existing walk. Uh, this will still be easy to mow and I don't know if you can see now we've got planting 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 areas So we'll see how the we can circulate the plant material uh, palm tree palm tree Palm tree over here. Let's go look at the little patio uh, Now as I join here to the patio I see this would be if it remained turf this corner or square box would be a high maintenance, hard to mow and edge area. Plus, we need some impact here. So, another palm tree looking out of the living room with light at night, it lit. It's going to be another focal. So, um, where the back walkway continues, I'm going to leave that kind of open here so you can enter in and outside of the back lawn. But for here, I want to poke out another radius bed and then join the walkway here easy to easy to mow curve and then again the placement for another palm tree somewhere in this area now you've seen us take out sod and turf before it's not that much fun but let's remove all the unwanted grass here then we'll be ready for some paver action So several days have passed, but we've taken out the unwanted grass in our paver walkway areas. And continuing on, we had to do some sprinkler improvements. So in orange, we flagged the existing heads. And then in green, where we were relocating, moving according to our new patterns and sidewalks, where we had to relocate sprinkler and irrigation heads. So we've got good coverage there. Now, I think we need to plant the palm trees before we do the pavers, because we don't want to mess up the pavers by having trucks or equipment uh, walking over that. So we've dug some of our holes, nice and big and sizey. Uh, we may have to fine tune those, we'll see that. But we're waiting on palm trees. Let's go back and take a peek at the progress so far. Now, you remember our walkway meandering through here, palm tree. We've piled up our dirt out of the way and in the bed areas or pathway areas to try to keep the lawn as clean as possible. Palm tree, palm tree. If you look at the plan, the idea or concept was that the palms would be left and right as we navigate uh, down the walkway to the side of the house, to the patio. And I want to reference this because we've got low voltage lighting, LED lighting we'll put in, and we've run some sleeves under here with our wires uh, to try to get that taken care of before the paver walks go in. Again, walkway meandering, palm tree, palm tree, palm tree behind me here, and then the patio, a nice French curve there. Well, I understand the nursery has loaded up our trees. They're about a half hour away. Let's go around the side of the yard and show you at least what we've been working on. I'm at the backyard corner of the ex existing patio. Now we have plans for this area, a big French curve patio that's going to be enclosed. So we have to set the footers and all that. So that's going to come a little bit later. But for this anchoring this in tall, medium, small palm tree, having these lit, it's going to be nice again as a focal point here off the entertainment area. Well, main road out here and the homeowners want some privacy. This is what I came up with. 
instead of just putting a, a hedge line right up here by the house, we've got a fast growing variety, Viburnum odoratissimum, and this is what I've done. I put a finger or a small bed here of the hedge, and then behind me, 30 feet away, another hedge line. But see, you notice how they're even in curved linear fashion. Hedges don't have to go in straight rows. And you notice how where this hedge line stops, the other one picks up and continues. So we've got privacy with time. Again, let these go six, eight, 10 feet tall if you want to. Privacy from the trees over there and the pines all the way to the house. Now again, we're still waiting for these palm trees and then we'll have plenty on our hands. What a difference a palm tree, any tree makes to the landscape. Our goal here is to create a courtyard feel between these two buildings. And I think we've already started to achieve that with our specimens. The walkway meandering here, going to the woodshed, to the back kitchen door. And then it's gonna meander at this little intersection. We've got a landscape bed there and it weaves towards you. Soon, you'll be standing on what'll be our side yard back patio. That's going to be neat. Right between here, a little bit of landscape. Now we put these trees in 12 palms in about 45 minutes. Speed isn't always necessary and it always isn't even important. We've still got a follow up by coming back, knocking down the hills and jetting in with water to eliminate any air pockets that can develop around the trunk. We'll ensure these trees get off to a good start. One thing next, coming up, pavers. Okay, we've got some catching up to do. We've been dodging rain in and out for 10 days, off and on. So we had to go ahead with our paver installation while we could. Pavers are already in. You've seen us lay pavers before, no big deal. But I got to show you the way the curves came out. 
almost exactly, I think, the way I planned and drew them. Very impressive. And with a few plants that we've already placed in, we're waiting for molds and do some lighting. Uh, I think you're going to like the way it's coming along, so let's catch you up to speed. Now, curved walks make such an impression. Come on with me. Let me show you what we've been accomplishing. You already saw the palm trees in place. Now it's like they make even more sense. This 20-foot patio, we reached out with a nice radius here. A little bit of furniture right off the main living area. Lighting on the palm trees as well as some pathway lights. We'll come back in a little bit and talk about some of the varieties of plant types that we've installed already. Kind of full sun condition here. So, our walkway, meandering to the back laundry room, around here. I love the way these little angles and the roads have come together. A lot of people would just do a separate walk here and have this join it. But I'll show you the way we cut these and had the guys cut them, it really looks better. We used a running bond pattern so that the, the pavers actually meander and move you along the walk. And not a straight line and no borders to speak of. This makes our walkway look wider. I've seen people come in and run a, a walk and then put borders on it and it looks like the walkway is only 18 inches wide because of the border. Well with the running bond, again, it just leads you right down the path. Back here, the rear of the house is a west exposure. Pretty hot in the Florida sun. So we've come in with these three inch caliper plus red maples. Um, a very easy to mow leaf when it drops. These are deciduous, so they'll let the summer, I'm sorry, they'll shade for the summer heat and let the winter sun in, which is what we want. We'll be doing a back patio over here. So we placed three of them. Homeowners want another one. The more shade, the better, I think, back here. This is where we stop phase one and where we pick up for phase two. We can't wait for that. Don't know how long it's going to take, but we'll keep you posted. First plant I'd like to speak about is the liriope, the Aztec grass. Uh, these buttes, oh, a nice ones, one gallon, so I couldn't help myself. Had to get about 30 of them, and they'll look good with the mulch. A southern living plant in our southern living plant collection is the Ligustrum sunshine, sunshine Ligustrum. Beautiful yellow foliage, full sun. It's going to stay yellow gold the whole time. Now, a little grassy agapanthus over here to my left, to your right. These are one gallons. They need a little time. That's okay. And we've kind of married them with this variegated yucca. What a beautiful plant. Now, this is soft touch, so um, no big problem that they're right here at the walkway. Easy touch. More agapanthus. Then we come to some knockout roses, a little bit of color, and they can get pretty big along this wall. More Aztec, and then finally, as you kind of get to our intersection, I wanted to create a little bit of impact here in the radius. That's why we cut out the bed the way we did. Palm tree, palm tree. And so I've taken the Kunti palms, a dwarf, tough, glossy green foliage, and kind of ran them in a circle behind me. So I think with time, that's gonna, make a nice impression when we come and go in these different directions. I want to bring you up close and install one of the Kunti palms because I found something even from the growers that we need to be cautious of. Now, nurseries aren't perfect, just like other individuals, but installing a plant too deep, even from the grower's perspective, is not really good. I don't know if you can see up close here, but as I pull him out, these are not deep-rooted for a couple reasons. They've kind of potted them right up around. Oh, I did not want that to come out. Too much dirt up around the cones here. This is where our soil level should be. Now, believe me, these are tough and durable. Got that fertilizer mixed in with a good soil. I'll stick him in and pack him good. Even using some of that good organic matter we've got. Let me go slide down and do another one. Now, again, I don't know if you can see, but this is just too much soil covered up around these cones. They've got to breathe. It's almost like they just can't get the nutrients and they need air circulation. 
Come on, baby. Nice and easy. Now there's a one indicator that I want to show you. If you've just got a soil line up here on the top, all that is excess soil. There's no roots that are penetrating in there. Here's where the root line starts, and that's where the soil line up top should be. So as I plant him, this is going to be my new desired height. There's that new soil line. A little mulch around him. He'll be fine. Since we're talking about plants, we're going to continue our plants. I'm in the front, the front porch, really patio, 250 square feet here. And what we did in order to eliminate the step, and I always prefer this, instead of using a small tile paver, we used a full two and seven eighths inch paver, laid right over the concrete, used polymeric sand to lock all this in, and so it's wheelchair or user friendly from the driveway all the way right into the front door. I mean, it's the only way to go. So consider using a, pull, a full paver. The tiles can crack, they might not take the traffic as well, and you've got the same look on the top. Uh, one more note on our paver entrance is that this came out with concrete and had a flat nose, but now we've improved that radius by coming out with a nice curved border that really accents the curve between these two big columns. Well, coming down the line, I want to show you this quarter line. It's kind of a burgundy gray, but what a beautiful spike plant. This is, I primarily picked it for its foliage color. And then in front of it, the gold lantana. This maroon or burgundy with the gold are going to contrast really well. Now we've also used some knockout roses. And at this point, with the palm tree over here, I've tried to create a little bit of circulation left and right with the lantana agapanthus to this side and then juniper you'll watch how that crosses over the walk but I want to show you a couple other things the knockout rose and this variegated red ruffle azalea this is a dwarf a nice red flower that is going to contrast well off that variegated foliage here are the tie plants for a little bit of color now we're in the west side of uh, Jacksonville it gets pretty cold and they lost some plants like this last year, but because of the color, why not? He wanted a few, so we got a few. Can you see the juniper crossing over from left to right? And then agapanthus right here at the, uh, where the walkway meets the driveway. So we've got some more pine straw to lay here and a few plants to plant, and then we'll be ready to talk about lighting. Uh, primarily, I wanna use two types of lights, if you will, or two different type of lamps. An uplight, like a bullet, this will uplight the palm trees. And sometimes, like in the front of the house, I'll use it to show off the architecture, like we want to do the columns, and then a, a few other walls. But in the back here, we've got window lighting, and so we don't really need to light the house as much as we do the pathway with this pathway lamp. Again, uh, something like this will throw a 12-foot radius of light on the path. Now, there are all different types of lights. Cheaper ones and expensive ones. These, this is alloy aluminum and it's fine. I mean, I've used these for decades. And the reason I've gone to this smaller hat light is because it's easy for maintenance. When you lose a bulb or it goes out, this unscrews, you put the new bulb in, you're right back in business. Instead of undoing the whole top and pulling things off with the screwdriver, higher maintenance. Okay, and in these, I take a regular lamp and change it to an LED bulb inside that's higher quality to give us the illumination we're looking for. The challenge I have here is which direction or angle do I want to light these palms? I mean, from your view, coming down the walk, if I was to put lights only on your angle, you would see them coming down. Well, what happens when you're coming back? Now, I've also got to consider windows, doors, and off the patio where the homeowner will be viewing the trees from this direction. So I'm gonna to have to do a, a little split, half and half. We'll, by placing them kind of off the house view, 
we'll get a little bit of turn on the corner and a little bit of illumination left and right. So we'll see how that works out. Now, all I've got here is a 14 gauge wire. What's nice about the LED lighting is that like with these lamps and the new bulbs, well, I can throw between 35 and 50 watts comparable to a halogen for seven watts on an LED. So smaller wire goes a lot longer. You don't need 600 and 900 watt controllers that you used to have to have for these systems. Now two to 300 watts and you're doing good. I've got to cross the line over there to get that one standalone palm tree. I've got uh, a fixture here and one behind me and I join in. We'll have to go through the grass here as well. I've come under the walk, come under this walk with my wire. So I'm pretty much set there, but I'll have to uh, see here's my lead under this walk. So I'll go that way. I'll pick up here and go this way and come all the way back around. I've got one behind me there as well. And uh, I've set the fixtures up and I just need to wire them up. Now I've got one little other run to catch at the end of the patio here. So what I do is find a, a tree if I can, some solid object. It might be a hose bib that's connected to the house or anything that I can tie off onto. Cut a little piece of PVC and I'm heading all the way towards you. I'll stop and get this light. So use a little slack there and all the way over to our last palm tree. Well, at this point of the game, it's always good to remind us of the three functions that providing a thick layer of mulch have for a landscape. Number one, cosmetics. I mean, look how that makes the plants just stand out. Two, moisture. That little bit of mulch, no matter what it is, leaves, straw, or whatever, helps hold that soil moisture right around the plant. And finally, well, to retard weed growth. Because anytime you've got a sprinkler system, the weeds just seem to pop up everywhere. One thing I can say about the lantana, the butterflies love it. And many times before even we, we get the plants installed, they jump on this. Yeah, they're doing their thing. I hate to cut their food source, but see how this has grown over the sidewalk? It's been a couple months since we've been here, so we've let things settle in. We've returned today to put a clear coat base on our pavers to seal them and to pay attention to the driveway. We're gonna stain that as well. So uh, in order to get to this, every bit of the, the walkway here, since we've gotta really get our sealer right up to the outside edge, I'm gonna trim this back a little bit. No harm lost because as you pull back, you're gonna see just how vigorous this lantana is becoming established. It loves the hot months. It's a drought tolerant, zero escape type plant that provides you with color all through the warm season. And then like we said, attracts butterflies. I've got another little section close to you here that I just want to tip back before we put our paver sealer on. The paver sealer we'll use is an oil-based product and we've had a little bit of rain. That's what the big issue here is, is working in and out of the weather. In Florida, we get these afternoon showers and boy, if you don't get out early, it's almost like it can mess you up during the day. The maintenance guys know what we're talking about there. Let's back up. We got part of our driveway done, but we want to continue with that. Well, the preparation for this was uh, we etched it with muriatic acid. I actually put it into a five gallon bucket and mopped it on nice and sloppy. We scrubbed it with a stiff push broom, a nice wide broom, and then we pressure washed it and rinsed it off. Then we need to let it cure. But what we've done is etch this thing so that the paint or stain here 
which is actually a paint, a color, is going to soar right down into those little pores. And this is the first coat. We'll come in with another coat. You can see we've got some holidays here, but this concrete is so porous that it's taking it in or soaking in that first layer. So the second uh, coat should go fairly easy because again, the first coat is just drawing so much. I've taken a paint brush to strike in this outside line where the garage meets along the brick and then a little roller to do our outside edge. And so really those are the only other tools we need other than our big roller. So we'll show you how we apply this. Rather than dip into a, a bucket or a paint tray, we're going to pour it on and roll it. Now, I don't know if it makes much sense to you not to dip into a pan every time you need a lot more paint, but pouring it on the drive right here, <laughs> you can't make a mistake. Why? Because we're rolling right over it. Uh, why would you stain or color paint, if you will, concrete like this? Well, it allows you a couple of beautiful reasons. If you pour old concrete and have new concrete, once you paint or stain over, well, you can't tell the old from the new. It does diminish even the cracks by about, I found out about 50%. So it reduces the visibility of any cracks you might have. Uh, also the color. I mean, it's nice, other than bright white, you can use a trim color to tie in with the, uh, the hue of the house and your paint and really make it attractive. Now there might be some scuff marks, you know, with tires, with time, but any surface is gonna get that. But like we talked about, etching it and pressure washing and cleaning it, we've cleaned out all those pores and now we're filling them with this first coat of, of paint, if you will. You kind of refer to stain, even though this is staining, it's a concrete paint. And uh, the stain process is very much the same. I'm not worried too much about sloppiness. I just want to roll it in. You need 80 degrees or greater today. And I'm feeling it. I don't know if who's hotter, this driveway or me, because I can feel the perspiration. But again, our goal, we're trying to beat the afternoon storm and rain. But you see how it colored over that little rust mark? Now you've got a beautiful surface that's continuous and look good for years to come. All right, while the driveway dries, We've got two good coats on there. Boy, what a difference already. The second coat, coat did go on smoother, like melted butter, if you will. Now we're dealing with oil, oil base. So instead of 18 inches, I've got a smaller roller because uh, the sidewalk here is only about four feet wide. And uh, so I'm dipping into the bucket now rather than just pouring it all over the surface. And again, this should do a couple things. It seals the color so that it's nice and wet looking. I may have to come back on this point and just really hand, hand touch that in. I couldn't wait to see what this is gonna look like. We will not need to two coat this. It is not necessary. Now, you have an option too of even spraying this rather than rolling it. You can put it in a pump up sprayer, one or two gallon sprayer, and spray it on from left to right. And that's fine. Matter of fact, you actually put it on a thinner coat. So this is really rolling a, a nice thick coat on the pavers. What a difference of the color that it brings out. Now, I really wish the sealer would last a little bit longer, but this will have to be done well, every couple years or so to keep this nice sheen sealed look. What's nice is I don't have to worry about spillage or overage. Just so it'll have enough time to dry is really my main concern. We've blown this walk, swept it, blew it again in preparation to get every little bit of debris, rock, sand. We used a polymer sand here, but 30 to 40 days after it's had time to set up, it's good to wait that long. 
Well, every project like this deserves before and afters. Hope you get a chance to really enjoy what we've accomplished here. This is where our paver walkway ends, or is it where it begins? Big plans for the backyard here. Another big circular indoor paver patio with a screened enclosure, but we'll have an outside pad as well to welcome you and come on in and out for the landing. All this will change. We come on top of our old patio with new looks, palm trees, lighting. Well, we'll have to invite you back. I've enjoyed having you today. I'm Gary Allen for the Designer's Landscape. See you next time.